It's an Englishman in the Balkans. It's a Saturday and we have really nice weather for a change here. We've had crazy weather. I was on my Instagram feed not so long ago and there was this wonderful picture that popped up of a line of horses on a skyline that just absolutely took my breath away. And I thought, why is that popping up on my timeline? When I researched a little bit more, it was from a lady photographer who had been photographing the wild horses at Livno. And on the uh, post, it said, just leaving Bosnia. So I thought, oh no, she's gone. But I dropped her a message and the answer was, I left a year ago. So I've caught up with Ruth Chamberlain. Now, Ruth lives in an equally beautiful part of the world. It's in the Lake District in uh, uh, the northwest of my home country of the United Kingdom. And she is the lady that took uh, that photograph and many more. So I thought I'd like to find out today a little bit about not only Ruth being a equine photographer, but also about why she came to Bosnia and Herzegovina in the first place, what she thought about the country, and to talk maybe just a little bit about some equine issues. So first, Ruth, who is Ruth Chamberlain? Ruth Chamberlain is me. I have always grown up around horses and I have a passion for promoting unusual and rare breeds in particular and their history and their relationship with people. And I go all over the UK with our semi-feral herds that we have around here. And occasionally I go abroad. What made you want to end up in Bosnia and Herzegovina? After all, it still is not the prime area for people to either holiday in or maybe for people to be interested in. I'd actually seen a couple of pictures on Instagram of the Livno horses. Um, and I'd always had an idea to go there one day. And it was actually about a week before I went, um, my friend who has a horse riding company, she was interested in seeing them as well. And she just messaged me, do you fancy coming to Bosnia with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. When? Next week. I was like, I can make that work. So, yeah, I, very, I did a bit of research more on the horses. I think it's one of those situations where if I hadn't have just said yes and gone the next week, I think I would have too much time for people to, to say, oh, Bosnia, I probably wouldn't have gone, but I'm glad I did go. And I was like, I'm sure it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And I ended up having the most wonderful time. The people were just lovely. And I, had, I just didn't want to go home, really. We talk about the horses, the Bosnian horses, <clears throat> specifically the Livno horses, in a minute. You said you would never have thought of coming. And when you did arrive, it turned out to be a much better experience, I imagine, than what you first uh, thought about. Having been away from the country for a year and you have time to think back about the experiences, what are your experiences? What, what do you think about uh, the country in general? I thought that you could see that obviously there had been war there. There's a lot of the scars left and it was interesting to see that. And the friend I was with had done a lot of traveling and she said it, it was very Balkan to her. But I, what I was really struck me was how much care people had taken. Like living there itself was so tidy. There may not have been enough money to put lots to it, replace all the roads with new tarmac, even on the drive over through the mountains. But it still, everything was so well kept and well looked after. And you could just see that the people there just, they just loved their country. They loved where they were and they loved sharing it with people. And I think it does have a lot of stigma against it, Bosnia which a lot of people, when I came back, a lot of people were like, oh, what was it like? What was it like? And I said, actually, it was re just really lovely. And I just enjoyed every part of it. It was nice to learn about beer cocktails, quite like those. Yeah, we just really enjoyed ourselves. The scenery was gorgeous. I met some really cool people. And yeah, just wonderful. In terms of equine uh, matters, how does the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina compared to your experiences back home in the UK. I'm sure there are some unique challenges for you with the feral breeds in the part of the United Kingdom where you live. Are there similar challenges for people in Bosnia and Herzegovina as far as the horses of Livno in particular are concerned? 
So yeah, but, so the main difference between Nislu and, and the UK, for example, is all of the horses in the UK are, are owned. So the ones that we have roaming about in Dartmoor, Exmoor, they're owned by somebody who have common grazing rights to keep their horses out there. So they control how many horses they have. They're all the breeding is controlled, but they do roam free. So a lot of people perceive them as wild. But even in Bosnia, you get commons grazing. But the difference is the horses there were basically just turned loose. They're completely natural herds with stallions, mares, foals. I think there's one gelding there who got released when he had an injury and his owner just put him out on the mountain. But they do, because there's natural predators there, and there's wolves and bears, they do naturally fit into the ecosystem. And horses are a native species of Europe. And there's an interesting part, part of horse domestication where horses, the domestic horse essentially completely replaced the wild horse. But physically, they have very similar um, impacts on the land. So a, a domestic horse can very naturally just become part of nature. And in Bosnia, it was great to see that. And the guides we took who came out with us on the first day said that some horses did get taken by bears and wolves, which is natural. And yes, it's sad, but it's all part of nature. And if that didn't happen, you'd end up with overpopulation and far too many horses. But all the locals that we met in Livno, they loved the horses and they thought they were great. Obviously, they do bring tourism to the area. Yeah, so in that aspect, they were just, yeah, they were just great and a bit different to the UK. It, for the first time, it was to me seeing the completely natural herd structure. There was all stallions, mares, and, and foals all mixed together, and lots of them coming together. And there was fights with the stallions, all as it should be in nature. That's quite a unique experience, then, if you don't see that back um, in the UK. What's the health, the standard of health of animals? That's always a, a question that I think about. Just getting away from horses for a minute, we have a, a stray a dog problem here in the north of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's mm -hmm. really heartbreaking at times to see the state of the health of dogs that have been abandoned. I know that the herds of Livno, mm -hmm. they're more into nature, but how does their health, the standard of their health, compare to those feral herds that you have back in the UK? I thought they were in fantastic condition. They were so fit and healthy. Again, because they have the stallions there, it, makes, it drives them and it makes them move and they exercise, they run around. But again, because it's nature, you don't see a lot of elderly horses there. And again, the locals said that a lot of elderly horses will just take themselves away. And that's when they get taken by wolves and bears and, and everything. Um, there was a few horses that did have injuries, which is just, again, part of nature. It wasn't caused by people. It was just injuries from living out and fighting with each other. A few of them did have ropes around their necks, which is where some people had gone out and tried to catch a few and it not worked, um, which is a bit of a shame to see that because the poor horse would go around with a rope stuck around its neck forever now. But generally, I didn't see... I mean, this one horse that had been set out on... He was a gelding that had been turned loose and so he was very friendly. But his owner knew that he could have a much better life out on the mountain because the injury had meant he couldn't be ridden anymore, but there's no reason why he couldn't just go and graze. So she does go and see him, but he just lives out there and has a lovely time and is in fantastic health. Whereas in Britain, the, most of the free-roaming ponies are in great condition, but we have a lot of problems with tourists feeding them and that causes a lot of health problems. So you get a lot of quite poorly ones that get very fat or they'll get laminitis. And you do get some areas where there's a lot of, because people feed them in one area, they gather and they tend to get worms because then they're all in one area and not able to, because if horses can roam, they'll generally be all okay. But because they stick to car parks and everything, they get problems with worm burden. Whereas in Bosnia, they definitely didn't have that. I know the guide said there's a couple of people go out and try to give them mineral licks and everything, which the horses don't need because there's plenty of minerals out there. That does cause problems with the horse, the wild horses coming to vehicles and stuff. But other than that, I the condition of those horses was incredible. There was, I didn't see one. I'm trying to think back, I think there was one slightly thin mare, but she did have a foal. And I went in April, so the ground was not quite hadn't quite slept, got got luscious yet. And a horse's net life cycle through the winter, they should drop their summer weight. They should drop a lot of weight, and then they should pile it all back on in the summer. And what, what I saw, that they were just very healthy horses. And I, yes, I wasn't concerned for their well-being at all. I, I was like, this is a brilliant life for them. Two things there that, that sprung to mind. One is first about the tourism, but 
And the other one is that phrase that I've never heard before when you said mineral licks. And when I've driven through Livno, especially as the winter is, is going away, I've noticed the horses are licking the ground. And my wife often says, I, yeah. th I think they're licking the salt that they've put on the road. But I wasn't so sure if that was true. Horses licking the ground is a natural thing because I thought this has got to be dangerous for them. Yes, it happens over here too. People grit the roads and it's the salts and the grits they love. And a lot of horse owners will put a mineral lick out in the fields with their horses. And some are doing it in places like Dartmoor Expo, the New Forest, to keep their ponies away from the road. So they'll go out into the forest and they'll put a lick out to keep the ponies safe so they don't go to the road for the grit. And I think in Livno, it was, they were saying it's the same sort of thing, but people would go out into the mountain but only feed the grit or the salt in one place. So all the horses would converge and they'd muddy the water that was there. And it just, it wasn't, it needed to be a bit done a bit more carefully. But again, the horse, I know there was lots of signs on the road saying horses crossing, but we never saw any horses off the mountain. But they may come down off the mountain in the winter to get grits and salts and things. But yeah, they do lick salt. The country is now being driven, and I think in a positive way, into improving its touristic uh, offerings. And you mm. most probably saw it when you were there. There are these quaint towns and cities. There's a huge amount of history that people in Northern Europe in particular have no idea about. There's a lot of problems now with people taking quad bikes into open areas and destroying land. They think they're doing yeah. the right thing, but they're not. And I've also noticed online and from stories that I get told from people that I know within the country now that there are a lot of people going to the Live No area to see these horses. In your view, is like yeah. mass tourism like that really bad? Should it be controlled? And if it should be controlled, how would it be best to show people that come to a country that there are these wonderful wild herds without disturbing the ecosystem and the stress on those herds? I come from a very touristic part of, um, the, of, of England and we do get a lot of tourists in the high season and it does cause problems. But as long as you have the right facilities for it, it's good. And obviously it does bring money into the area. And in Livno itself, the town itself was gorgeous. We stayed in local accommodation. And the, the road up to the mountain is a gravel road. And we just drove our car up onto the mountain, but just parked it on the road. So we didn't go driving around. But there were other vehicles that were driving off road. And I know the guide we were with on the first day, she took us on a known route. But she said to these, she met these, we met these people. She said, be careful coming up here. You don't know the routes. You don't know the mountains. Just stick to the pathway. So I think it's important to maybe have a bit more. So not, not signage is the wrong word, but I think a bit more information readily available. Because we did, I, what I would consider the right thing in someone like Bosnia is to get a tour guide who knows the mountains. Because she did say there are some, there's potentially some unexploded landmines up there. And she just wanted to show us where they were. And I think if there was, because when you drive up the mountain, there's absolutely no clue that you're about to meet a herd of wild horses up there. And I think that sort of thing is very helpful and it helps keep people in one area where they might see them. But again, I, I, don't, I wouldn't thought there was hordes of people going to see them. I think there's a nice amount, and it's obviously there's a couple of guiding businesses there who are purely set up for the horses. So it's an income for families already. So I think it's, it's great in that sense. And I, also, I think there was some other places where there might have been some wild horses and whether or not it would be worth trying to spread the concentration of people amongst all these other little locations. So it's all not just going to live there. Yeah, but I, th I think it's a good thing. I do think if the numbers kept on increasing of people visiting, I think some of the money that tourism is bringing in should maybe go towards improving the facilities for tourists to use. A bit maybe a, a parking area up on the mountain so people don't just park on the gravel track. And it could just be an extent of like a widening of the track where people could just pull over and maybe a little sign up there to explain what's here, the history of the horses and where people can find more information and just warning people to try and stick off, stay off, stay on the road and not drive around the mountains or in their cars. Since you <clears throat> returned to the UK, having been introduced to these, these horses here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, 
And you being in that sort of ecosystem that you are, you're talking to other people that are passionate about equine issues. How has what sort of reactions have you had from people that said you went to Bosnia, they've got horses in Bosnia? Because it's not really well known, or is it really well known within the equine world? I know that people talk about wild hordes in Mongolia, but Mongolia and Bosnia are two completely different issues, aren't they? If you think of wild horses that you go and photograph, you immediately think of Mustangs and Brumbies in Australia and the USA. But if people are very interested in so where have they come from, then actually the, so the horses in Lizno are descended from mostly Bosnian mountain horses, which are an incredible breed. They are, I think they're one of the most ancient breeds in the world. And they've actually got, there were some studies done on the anatomy, which shows how they are, like they're very close to the original wild horses of Europe. But it just, it surprises people. But a lot of people have said how they can see similarities of the Bosnian horses to the sort of mountain and moorland breeds of Britain. And you can see the, how they all have shared ancestry eons back. I know people found it interesting and yeah, I think when I say no, I've been away like, oh, what did we go there for? And I go, horses, they're like, ah, of course. What is your favourite <clears throat> memory from your trip, whether that is a particular shot that you took or something that you experienced that has stuck with you, whether that's food, a site or whatever? Oh, it was all lovely. There was, even like the first time we arrived and unfortunately hadn't, we literally just got off the aeroplane and hadn't my camera together or anything yet, but the horses literally arrived and started boxing each other next to the car. That was pretty special to see immediately. And just, I think we spent most of an afternoon with them, but that when I took that picture of them going over the hill, watching the whole herd just move en masse was pretty incredible. As I said, we enjoyed the beer cocktails in uh, Livno. That was the translation of them, but they were quite nice. And we also went up to Cooper's to go and go for a horse ride. There's a, a little place up there where a lot of tourists are going to stay and have a riding holiday there. And we had the most fantastic ride through this valley, just stunning scenery and a really good quality ride as well. I think that it's been, it was the first year they were open since COVID. And so they'd been really struggling, but they were just wonderful people and they had great food as well and just a fantastic ride. And I couldn't really walk when I got back because it was it was such a long ride. <laughs> and then I had to drive to the airport after that. But I got there. You're passionate about promoting and saving rare equine breeds. And there's most probably a lot of work to do back in, in the UK. What do you think the future, what does the future look like for this herd of wild horses that are living as they would have done without any real human interaction. Is there a real healthy future for them? Or do you think that unless something is done by local authorities or the people themselves, that herd could be in danger like other herds have been before them? The only problem I could foresee with those horses is potentially inbreeding because they are all on that mountain. But we have in the UK, in the Carnotai Mountains, we've had little ponies that have been isolated. There's only about 300 of them. And they've been living for centuries. And they maybe have a bit of inbreeding as well. But I don't think, I think in natural populations, that's not too uncommon. And I think there was a point when, especially during the war, the, ho the Bosnian horses were, a lot of them died. And there were suddenly, I think they actually got protection in the 90s from people just going up and shooting them if they wanted to. So they have got some sort of protection now. And I think they now, I think the people of Livno value them so much. Even when you go on the, the Visit Livno Instagram, their logo is of a horse. So I think the locals are very fond of them and keeping them there. And I think if there ever was an issue, I think they would step in and say if there was a disease outbreak or something, they would step in and try and save them because the horses now have given Livno such a, like a place on the mask, if you like, it's a destination to go. So yeah, I think it's, I think they have a good future. And another great thing about them is because they are integrated so naturally into the wild, it shows the rest of the world how, how good horses are for the environment because horses generally get such a, a stigma against them for being bad for the environment, but actually they're really good. But when you see a horse in a paddock and you just see it in his grass, of course, it's not going to be grazing much there, but when you see them out in the wild 
and all the wildflowers that can flow around them, all the different types of species of plant, all the things, they're all part of the life cycle. They're a native species. And I think seeing the, the Nesno example is just everything. It's, it's everything you could possibly want when you're trying to show how good horses are for the environment and for the future of a, a green Britain, a green world, really. Is there anywhere online or in, in physical books or whatever where you have a, a gallery of some of those wonderful shots that you've taken of the horses of Bosnia and Herzegovina? At the moment, I haven't been updated my website for quite a while. I tend to just put everything on my Instagram and Facebook in a very random order. I don't have, but I usually try and tag like live near wild horses or wild horses. So you can, you can, if you search through my feed, you'll see. If, I've got one photograph pinned on my Instagram of a Bosnian stallion. But yeah, I don't have them all in one gallery, unfortunately. But it's something I want to have time. I'm trying to work through getting them all put into galleries so people can just easily find one breed or one place. You most probably have a, a lot on your plate. What is a project, if you're allowed to talk about it, what is a project that you are really involved with at the moment? With horses, it's... Again, I'm doing a mixture of things of promoting these rare breeds. I recently went to the Faroe Islands. They have a very rare breed there. And their tourist board was really keen to try and help me promote the Faroe Islands as a destination and trying to save their horses as well. But it, I am just trying to raise awareness of horses. I'm hoping to do a book about the British native breeds. And I'm also trying to, again, show how horses are very helpful with regenerative grazing that's a really big thing in the UK at the moment and I'm trying to make sure that horses don't get left behind because a lot of the time people just farmers will use cattle and sheep but horses often get left behind because they're not commercial in the same way that a cattle and, cattle and sheep are so my big thing at the moment is just keeping horses in the loop keeping them at the front of conversation really are you planning at any time to come back so that we can show you maybe more of the country that you saw on your photography visit and I don't know, maybe expand your taste buds with the quite unique cuisine that they have here. I would absolutely love to come back. I was thinking about when I could, and at the moment I don't have, I'm trying to think even like in the next year, I don't think I have enough time to spare to come across, but it is somewhere I definitely want to come back because I, I had such a, a brief introduction to it, but what I saw and, and experienced, I just loved so much and I'd be very keen to come back again. So, yes, please. <laughs> well, I'll be in touch about that, Ruth. Once again, thank you very much indeed. You'll see links in the show notes to wherever you watch or hear this to Ruth's uh, Instagram, her website, even though she's going to update it, and any other information so that you can follow it. Ruth, thank you so much. And I wish you as calm a weekend ahead as you can have. Thank you. <laughs>